It was not that this took place by accident or this was collateral damage. Very consciously, very blatantly, the target were the children of Pakistan. Mercifully, this country has had only one 9-11. In the last 13 years, Pakistan has faced many 9-11s, similar incidents. But this particular incident, in which the target were children per se, changed the mindset of even those elements who felt that military operation is not the only way out of the crisis. Um, if I may, let me push you a little bit more on this, specifically on the question of um, groups that this town talks a lot about and one is asked over and over, and those are groups that may not be doing anything in Pakistan, but are seen as being operational elsewhere. So the anti-India groups being, being the obvious ones, maybe the Afghan insurgent groups being the obvious one. Um, some of the concerns arise because, for instance, people see on TV December 4th, Jamaat ud Dawa does a big rally in Lahore. And then it's also listed as one of the organizations that is to be banned or taken to task or whatever. This dichotomy, I think, confuses a lot of people about the intent of the Pakistani state. Well, I can speak about the intent of the Pakistani state as of today. I cannot speak about the intent of the Pakistani state or, or various Pakistani governments uh, over the years. Sure, sure. Um, but more importantly, uh, the international community have understood the point of view in this respect of successive Pakistani governments. Uh, so why blame us at this stage of time when I think the intent in this respect is very, very clear. Okay. Uh, our point of view is that it will take a bit of time. Things uh, have, have reached such, such a pass that you cannot expect overnight solutions. The intent is there which was never there before. Hmm. And actions have been taken over the last few weeks which are uh, a manifestation of that intent. What is the Pakistani state doing um, in terms of either revamping or improving the police per se, because ultimately they are going to be the front line of crime prevention and terrorism control? Well, uh, as you've rightly said, uh, it, is, it is a police. If, if uh, the police uh, is able to uh, somehow, we are able to, in the, short in the shortest possible term, carry out an exercise of uh, capacity strengthening, I think that will do wonders uh, for our fight against ex extremism. But we have, we, have, we have a lot of problems on this score. Uh, the element of time, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. finances, uh, training. Uh, the police in Pakistan, as you know, is not equipped or trained for anti-terrorism or counter-terrorism. Uh, it is for normal law and order activity. The little uh, help and support that was available internationally, that is thinned out now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have now engaged the military uh, in um, capacity building of the police. And the first uh, rapid response force of the police, uh, which passed out uh, just recently in Punjab, uh, that was entirely uh, supported by the military. So, in the short term, we are getting their support, not only in, in terms of training, but also in rec rec recruiting some personnel from the military, uh, in, the mil in, in the police force also. Uh, people who are close to retirement in the military uh, or uh, people who have left the army and are uh, now willing to join the police force. So uh, it is going to be uh, a bit of a, a mixture of police and retired army uh, officials uh, working as a rapid response force in the short term and in the medium and long term, of course, we have a, a program of training uh, chalked out, but that will take anything between 18 months to two years.